Psalm 57. Right? It says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I just got to write that because I want everybody to walk out here tonight free. I don't care what your calamities is. He says, there where the wings are. You know, oh man, oh man, we, it seems like we just can't get away from God's wings. <laughs> that, 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 that holy place. Underneath that wings, what will he found? Refuge. Yeah. Till the calamities have overpassed. Or they are gone. But a calamity, I mean, if you go to the Webster's Dictionary, it's a very wide word. But I am sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of calamities. I think it's time for calamities to just overpass. But he says, to get them to overpass, I must come under the wings. And if I get under the wings, I must find refuge. So it's the refuge under the wings that will make the calamities to pass by. So tonight we're going to get under those wings and get those calamities to pass by. I will cry unto God. I wish we could have just read Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I shall say of the Lord, my rock and my strength, my God in whom I find refuge. Where? Underneath the Wings, And then verse 9 and 10 says the same thing there. Underneath the wings, he will see that the calamities will pass by. Okay? Same thing. Uh, he shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of them or him that would swallow me up. Come on. Are you not fed, fed up? F -f -f fed up with reproaches. I mean, we make statements. And then when it doesn't come to pass quick enough, there's a reproach. But God spoke to me a few months ago and says, the reproach is gone. He says, my soul is among lions. Lions. I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Now don't look too holy. I want to speak to people that still got their feet on this earth. I know we're in heaven. I know we're seated in heavenly places, but brother, you still do your business on earth. You still got to work with men. You still got to work with motor cars. You still got to put petrol in your motor. You still got to put food in that tummy of yours. So on this earth, people have got their teeth sharpened against you. He says, Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they have fallen themselves. Ha, ha, Selah. <laughs> my heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and I will give praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. Now, you can so long take your Bible and turn to Joshua 20. But it says, under that wings, I will find refuge. I will be delivered from my calamities. And they will overpass or they will be gone. But there's something I got to do. I've got to awake. To praise us and thanksgiving. Just put that somewhere in your heart and then turn to the book of Joshua, chapter number 20. The Lord said also to Joshua, Say to the Israelites, appoint among you cities of refuge, of which I spoke to you through Moses, that the slayer who kills anyone accidentally and unintentionally may flee there, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. Now listen to this. If I can try and explain to you all the words used in the original Hebrew, it says, no matter what you did, purposefully or unpurposefully, 
intentionally or unintentionally. Anything that happened to you, God says, I will prepare cities. And I will call them cities of refuge. So God says, I will bring cities of refuge. Now, I don't know if you heard what I just read in the beginning, but it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my fortress and my refuge. Now, he calls it, I will be in the city of the Lord. Now, the city and the refuge of the Lord is mentioned 49 times in the Bible. It says, God is my refuge. And you'll be amazed how many times when he says, God is my refuge, he refers to to a city because in the book of revelation i mean when the angel and jesus and the angel of jesus appeared unto john he said and he showed me a city and he showed me a city and he showed me a city and the bible says in hebrews 11 they all looked for a city and the bible says in matthew 5 verse 14 15 and 16 you are the salt of the earth the light of the uh, you are the salt of the earth the light, light of the world you are a city that is set on a hill so time and time again the word city comes in but when the city is truly understood it talks about refuge yeah. But that city of refuge, when we read it in the Psalms, is never a physical city. It's a spiritual place in Almighty God. He is my refuge. How can God be your city? So that city, if you can get away to that city, anything that chases you, any calamity, any disease, any sickness, any problem, any poverty, every unsettled deal, if you get there, it cannot find you there. Are you with me? Verse 4. Now listen to this. He who flees to one of those cities, you've got to flee to that city. Okay? Shall stand at the entrance of the gate. You shall stand... At the gate of that city. Ooh, man, read. And explain his case to the elders. You shall explain your case to the elders. Of that city. Of that city of refuge. Right? They, they shall receive him to the protection of that city. And then they shall receive you into the protection of that city. And give him a place... To dwell among them. And you shall get a place to dwell among the elders at the gate. Now we know that this book is written as an example of what is really happening on this side of the book. So if you read this side of the book, it's an example of the true thing that's happening on this side of the book. John saw a city. He saw a throne. And he saw creatures and angels and cherubims and winged creatures and elders. And they were falling down in front of the throne. And he saw gates. He says, so if I am in a calamity, you've got to come to a place that that will overpass. It must be gone. It'll be in the place of refuge under the wings. So God has prepared such cities where God is your refuge. If we flee to that city, so you got to purposefully do something to get to that place. And if you stand at that gate, so I pause at your gate once more, as my heart and my spirit soar, in the beauty of holiness. I see you, son of righteousness. Right? We sing it. So I pause at that gate. And I want to enter. He says, if I explain to the elders that's watching the gate, 
They will receive me into the city for protection because it's a place of refuge. I will get a place to dwell in that city. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. And if I get into that city, I shall say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my strength, and nothing shall hurt me and nothing shall harm me. And I will be among the elders. Now, if you go read, for instance, the book of Zechariah in chapter 3, when the high priest, you remember the high priest Joshua was standing in front of God's throne and Satan was there to accuse him, remember? And his clothes were dirty. And he said, take away the clothes. And he said, and I will give you a place to stand Amongst them that stand in you. In your Bible, I will give you a place to stand among them. I would have read it, but the time is going so fast. But for notes, Zechariah chapter 3. Okay? Up to about verse 9. Another scripture you can write is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4 through 16. That says that we can go to the throne of grace to find mercy and grace to be helped in time of trouble. Come and stay with me. In the time of trouble, there's a throne. I've got to go through the gate that's called the veil. If I get there, I will find a high priest that's busy praying for me. So let's read on. Verse number five. If the avenger of blood pursues him. Okay, if the avenger of blood. You mean if the calamity is on your trail, brother, no matter what it is, if it's on your trail. Okay, read Peter. They shall not deliver the slayer into his hand. Okay, if the avenger comes to find you out, you will not be delivered. (laughs) Because he killed his neighbor unintentionally. Okay, read, just go. Having had no hatred for him previously. Okay, in other words, it was accidents. Yeah. And he shall dwell in Psalm that 91, city. Psalm 91, he shall dwell in the city. Until he has been tried before the congregation and until the death of him who is the high priest in those days. Then the slayer shall return to his own city from which he fled and to his own house. Oh, you will not be delivered to the avenger. But you must stay there, oh yeah, until the high priest, the high priest, is dead. He says, so if the high priest is dead, something else is going to happen. I'm going to put it down here. Hebrews 3 through Hebrews 9 says, There was a high priestly order of Levi. And this priestly order, every time the high priest died, it went over to another high priest. But then Jesus came as high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And out of his high priestly order, there will be no end. So he says when the high priest dies and the other high priest takes over, this avenger will be gone. They try to put calamities on you because you found refuge in the city where there's elders in the gate. You've explained your case. Now, if you can find your place in that city and realize that there's one high priest that's dead and another high priest that's taken over. Okay. Something can happen to you. Let's go. Okay, I'll read. Then the slayer can return to his own city. So the minute you realize the old covenant is finished and done away with Hebrews 8. You got to realize that you have received a new testament, not a new covenant. 
a new testament. He said a testament is only valid if the testator dies. So Jesus died to leave us a will, a testament. I don't have to do anything. A covenant is I've got to work to get my part done. A testament is I go to the lawyer and get it. So I go to the Father who is the righteous judge with Jesus who is the advocate and I get my testament that he laid down for me. So if I can realize that, I can get the avenger off of my back. The calamities will pass over because I realize that the high priest that was there because there was an avenger that was the law that was legally there to accuse me and make me feel guilty. But the high priest had to do the offerings because of the avenger that accused me. And if I realize the high priest is now dead, because the old covenant is gone because Jesus finished the avenger and I've got a new testament with a high priest the calamities he <laughs> says then you can return to your own city it means you can get up here tonight and walk out of that door and the thing will not wait for you at your house Somebody got to understand me. You can get up here, walk out here, and the thing will not wait for you at your business. You can get up here and walk out here tonight, and that thing will not wait for you in your home. You can get up here and walk out here, and it will not wait for you in your lawyer's office. Somewhere, somehow, God will intervene and do something so out of the ordinary that you will realize this can only be God. So you must take it tonight. Okay, let's go. And they set apart and consecrated Kadesh in Galilee. Okay, well, listen, listen, listen. Slowly. Okay, Kadesh. In the hill country of Naphtali and Shechem. And number two. How do you spell it? Where, where am I? N-A-P-H. Shechem. Okay. Number three. In the hill country of Ephraim and Kiriath Arba. That is Hebron. And they call that Hebron. In the hill country of Judah. Okay, stop there. Stop. This is the first, first three cities that you are able to run to. If you are sitting here tonight and you start getting overstressed because of calamities and you don't get help from the pills you drink or the doctors you go to, some doctor, some pastor, some psychiatrist, some psychologist would advise you to go to a city of refuge. They will say to you, why don't you just go to warm baths and just sit in the spa for a week? It'll do you the worlds of good. Now be honest here. And isn't that funny when you leave your city where the calamity is? You leave your city where the problem is. You leave your city where the marriage or fights is. You leave your city where the problems and the financial structure is. When you leave it, brother, and when you get to that other city, holiday resort, warm baths, spa, you sit there, man. You're a different person. <laughs> wow. You don't want to go home. And then after three days, you get in your car and on the way home, you says, you know, I never had such three days. In my, I feel a brand new person. Or you go to a youth camp. And you're away from your mama and your papa. And your teacher and your elder and your pastor and your preacher. And you're at the youth camp and it's at the river site. And man, and there's foofy slides. And there's alarana goed. And after two days at the youth camp, the youth pastor say, I can't believe it's the same children. <laughs> or you go to the Easter conference. And you say, these three days my life has been changed. I'll never be the same. 
Then you go back to your city. And you scarcely back in your city. And the youth pastor to say, I can't believe it. You should have seen these young people at the camp. The manager of the resort phone said, I can't believe what you're telling me. When these people were here for the holiday, those said, I, it couldn't be. I mean, they were the most happiest people. Have you ever felt it? When you're out in the city of refuge, wow! But when you get back in your city, things are just not like it's supposed to be. But according to this book, what I've just read, there's a certain thing that will happen if you've been to those three cities and you return to your city and come back to your city. The avenger will be gone. The calamities will be gone. They would have overpassed. So, Kubus, what's missing? So now all those names have got different names. Did you know there's some names in the Bible that's got more than one name? One meaning? It depends on which context it's used. So in this context, I'll write it down for you. Kadesh means to set yourself apart in worship. And that brings you to a state of sanctification. Is that okay? Shechem means the following. To be ready. Are you ready? In a diligent way. For change. Hebron means, now you know Hebron has got about three, four different meanings in the book. Hebron means You've got to have fellowship with the right kind of people. That's why you've got to decide and realize, where are you going to? Who are you worshiping with? Who are you with? Now, these three cities were on one side of the river. Then there was a river. That if you've been to those three cities, you had to cross the river to get to the other three cities. Now, let's read. Okay. Beyond the Jordan, east of Jericho, they appointed Bezer in the wilderness tableland. Okay. From and the then, second one. From the tribe of, of Reuben and Ramoth in Gilead from the tribe of Gad. And then? And Golan in Bashan. Golan. From the tribe of Manasseh. In Bashan. Bezer means. Encompassed around. With a wall. Ramot means raised high. It means to be exalted. Are you ready for Golan? There is a refuge where your calamities will pass away. But you've got to awake to praises. 
And you've got to find a way to get to that city. God has placed a parable, an example. Call it what you want to in the Old Testament of cities of refuge. 49 times God is called my refuge. So if I flee to that city and stand at that gate and explain why I want to come in, the elders will open the gate. They will receive me in a protective place, and I will get a place to dwell among them. And we have mentioned a few scriptures, Zechariah and Hebrews 4, and among the people there. The avenger, the one that is trying to get you down, will not be able to to get you there because you will not be delivered until the high priest is dead. When the high priest is dead, a new one will take over. The new one will see to it that the avenger has now got nothing to say, so now you can leave to your own city. So we know according to Hebrews 3 to Hebrews 9 that there is no more Levitical high priestly order, so there is no more Levitical priestly order that can die. The last one died, and the, the one that took over 1 John 3 verse 8, for this purpose the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the evil one. We know that Jesus took away the, the letter of guilt and accusation that stood against you, Colossians 2 verse 12 through 15. So now he made an open display of the pub enemy publicly so now Jesus says you will not be delivered anymore to the avenger because I have finished with the avenger I am now your high priest <laughs> Hebrews 7.25 Hebrews 9.24 Romans 8.34 and I tell you uh, 1 Timothy 2 verse 6 and now we've got a high priest interceding Hebrews 4 verse 14 through 16 Hebrews 10 verse 19 through 21 so now we've got a high priest that says I will not let the avenger get this man he can freely go to his city but you still got to understand the cities you got to set yourself apart in worship and that's why many people go home and when they walk into the house and open the door everything that was wrong is still wrong because they had the opportunity for an whole hour to worship God and they were busy with girlfriends, boyfriends they were busy with cell phones and talking they were busy with what is this one wearing they were busy with who's sitting behind me who's sitting in front of me they missed point number one brother you're gonna get home and the avenger is gonna wait for you you the minute you open the door and he's going to say here I am sorry point number two you got to be ready after worship to receive something that will change you so week after week day after day we preach powerful sermons so your thoughts are wandering and and you're thinking of this afternoon you're at the river and you're at yesterday's fishing and you and when you get home the avenger is waiting for you with his fork and his tail he can't wait to get a hold of you because you didn't take the point number one you didn't take point number two point number one was supposed to prepare you for two and you had to prepare for change the change must make you to start having fellowship so after and in between this word the person sitting next to you you must start feeling a love to him knowing my goodness we're sitting in an atmosphere of worship of praise of glory of signs and of wonders but what are we thinking about but then we got across the river that's why we got the pool of Bethesda, so that in every now and then we can cross the river and make a statement that we're crossing a river. And if we do this, we cross the river, then the high priest that's now alive, that took over from the one that is now dead, will make sure that he will build a wall around you. Because he says, there shall no evil befall you. There he shall give his angels charge over thee. There he shall be covered under his feathers. Under his wings thou shalt find shelter. Oh, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. God is a wall of fire. 
That's the scripture we read in Psalm 57. A wall of fire around me for protection. So it says, you'll be a wall around me. And if I get inside of that wall because I'm crossing through the river, I will be raised so high that the circumstances will not have an effect on me. And I will walk right into Golan and I will realize the calamities have been removed. They passed away. And when I go through the river, he says, go home. When you get to your home, the deal will be settled. The sickness will be gone. Are you not tired of bulls this size lying on your desk? Are you not tired of opening your bathroom cupboard and there's pills and medicines? Are you not tired? Of getting in your car and struggling to start the thing. Are you not tired of getting in your bed and the springs is sticking you? I'm just trying to ask you a question. Are you not tired of the calamities? Don't you think it's time to just look away to what God has prepared for you? So why does God want you to flee from your city? God is omnipresent, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing. The devil ain't. He's got to use his impies. He's got to use his little demons to bring him some information of what's happening in certain cities. He's not in control. He's not in control. God can, in one anointing, heal all the deaf, all the blind, all the cripples, all the cancers, and all the sugar diabetics. But a demon that makes deaf can only make, make you deaf. If he's cast out of your ear, he can't attack another man in his eye. Because demons are located and assigned to one place or one thing at a time. So the Christian that can realize what I'm saying can have the breakthrough. Matthew 14, verse 13. When Jesus heard it, he withdrew from there privately in a boat to a solitary place. When the crowds heard of it, they followed him by land on foot from the towns. He went outside the towns. When he went ashore and saw a great throng of people, he had compassion, pity, and deep sympathy for them and cured. What did he do? Cured their sick. They were in a barren place, and then he got the food. He said, bring the bread here, and he fed the people. Jesus left the city. And everybody followed him outside the city. When he came outside the city, he said, Now you're away from that pile of debts lying next to your cupboard. Now you're away from your office door. Now you're away from that room filled with tablets. So you're outside the city. The territory where the spirits are keeping you in bondage, you are now out of their territory. You are now under my authority completely. So bring the sick, let's heal them. Bring the little boy's bread, let's break it. We're outside the city. Inside the city, there's all the shops that's competing with prices. So there's the mammon spirits. Mark chapter 10. Verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and with a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should have peace. But he cried louder, Jesus, have mercy on me. And what happened? Jesus healed him. 
Mark chapter 7, verse 31. Jesus coming back from the region of Tyre passed through Sidon on the Sea of Galilee through the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a man who was deaf and had difficulty in speaking. They begged Jesus to place his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the crowd, thrust his fingers in the man's ears, spat and touched Sidon said, if fatter that is open, and he could hear. 8 verse 22. And they came to Bethsaida. People brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. But he caught the blind man by the hand and let him out of the village. And when he spit on his eyes, he healed him. And we know the man was.